The LEGO Dune Royal Atreides Ornithopter is not what you really think it is. Well, you think you're buying a LEGO Icon set, but in fact, you're buying a highly, highly complex LEGO Technic set. Let's talk about it. Bricks and Minifigs is your one-stop shop for all things LEGO. Hit the link below to find a store near you. That is 80 centimeters from this tip to this tip. That's how big this thing is once assembled. Yes, that just this function alone makes this set a somewhat of a hard set to review. Cause as I said in the intro, you think you're getting somewhat of a model that is gonna be nice to put together, it's gonna be super chill to stand on your shelf. In fact, you're getting one of the most highly complex technique sets I have ever built. And there is a brilliance behind it in complexity, but there's also the brilliance of the beautiful mind of Mike Psiaki, one of my favorite senior LEGO designers over at LEGO, who is behind this set. And I believe that might be his highest attempt uh, at LEGO Technic ever made. If you are a casual sci-fan fan like myself, if you're not a Duna aficionado, the manual does a pretty good job at explaining what this thing is, what it means in the lore, and also what these characters are in the grand scheme of things. We have Paul Atreides, the son of a duke with a pretty casual outfit here, Dr. Lyat Kynes, the Imperial Planetologist and the Judge of the Change with her Fremen blue eyes, and a nice soft cape, Duke Lero Atreides with a detailed Arrakis armor print, Lady Jessica who comes with a cowl and a hair mold for her and a print with the face that is very resembling of her look in the movie, Garni Halleck, the trusted advisor of Duke Leto and war master of the house of the Atreides, he comes with pauldrons for his armor, Chani, played by no one else but Zendaya in the movie and she comes with a scarf and her freeman eyes as well, Duncan Idaho, the tactical combat expert of house Atreides in a pretty casual outfit and probably the most bizarre lego minifigure of 2024 at least so far, Baron Vladimir Harkonnen, by the way his name is misspelled in the manual, that's kind of funny, and he comes with the, yes you guessed it, the longest cape ever made in a LEGO minifigure form. And for me that's the least um, favorite minifigure of the set. The cape is nicely printed for sure, but it's just weird uh, with this paper-like stiff type. Uh, the stand is kind of wonky and the minifigure has absolutely no features at all, just black legs, black torso and a single head print. That's it. So this character doesn't appear very attractive of course in the movies as the big bad guy but also in the minifigure form I don't think he translates very well. So personally I don't like him very much. Gotta say it's quite nice to have such a nice lineup of exclusive never before seen characters in a single set so you can say Lego went all in on that but the main part is this thing. Hey, by the way, if you like the shirt I'm wearing, you can get yours today. These shirts are made in partnership between Beyond the Brick and Bricks and Minifigs stores, so you can get those at participating Bricks and Minifigs locations with all these cool logos and Bricks are my sport, and you can also order one online at the link in the description below. First, I'm gonna say that it's definitely a set that prioritizes functions over looks. Mike Psiaki must have had this design philosophy when starting this set, cause there is no, as not a single little piece of space inside of it that is spared and is not technic. Let me tell you that. What you're gonna go through as the process goes, you're gonna go through multiple levels of connections, movement pieces, transmissions, you name it, everything inside of it moves. That's why the set has no interior apart from some, some cockpit area and the ramp even on the back doesn't really lead to anywhere, it just leads to more technic, you just can't walk into the set. Uh, and the, the small amount of bricks that is left over after you're done with all the technique is just used to cover up all these pins and holes and gotta tell you, it doesn't do a very good job at that because I kind of would say for the first time in many many months that I would like a set to be a little more expensive. So it can use some more bricks to cover some of these gazing technic holes. I wouldn't mind that, but here we are. The functions, once they're done, once you go through the major incredibly complex process and quite gruesome one, in a way how much your fingers will hurt after this, you end up with having a blast of a functions collections. Well, you have seen the wings deploy, so that's that. You know, it's eight wings moving in a seamless 1.8 to second point B transition. There is a lock lever that does the thing so they don't, you know, go back when you finish the movement and same goes for the other positions, they, do, they won't flap open like that. The mechanism behind this again is incredible, I have no idea how they made it, it's just pure magic of technique. This blades of course is not only 
the crazy looking piece, but it's the longest piece LEGO has ever created from a single mold. So we have the longest cape from Baron Harkonnen and the longest ever blade piece ever made. Yes, even the Airbus helicopter, which was a recent helicopter from LEGO, doesn't have as long of a blades as this set and that helicopter also had custom blades made for specifically for the set. So we have a record here, record breaker and how the way they works is just brilliant. There's so much connectivity inside the way all these uh, things work, how they connect, how they move in, per in kind of simultaneous basis. You're going to be very impressed and it's quite satisfying to do. You can see I'm holding the set by the back of it. So you can kind of use it as a club, it's that solid, the level of rigidness inside the set is quite insane, so you can literally, you know, hit something with it and it won't most likely break with many, many minimal damage, maybe to some cockpit areas or some stuff like that, but it's that solidly made. It's technique upon technique upon technique upon technique plus movement, so there is that. Once you're done with that, there's a second function, when you open the wings once again, you can flap them. So pressing the lever in the back allows you to uh, imitate the Dragonfly Ornithopter's movement of his wings. Of course they move like super super fast in the movie to make the thing fly in the Arrakis desert, but in this case it's kind of resembling what you would <laughs> expect from that happening, right? So that's pretty cool. That's another function that was like will absolutely blow your mind once you're done with it. And this third function is a very hidden one, so you'd say the landing gear is kind of exposed right now, deployed, but there's a little kind of old school uh, sprocket or rocket piece from LEGO that makes it possible to hide both the front and the back landing gear in simultaneous fashion. So how cool is that? Same thing like with the wings, point A locks, point B locks, so there is nothing like if you go in between, it's gonna just collapse on its own weight. But you can, you know, if you go all the way, you can feel that little lock, that exhibits the extra movement, it's gonna lock it in place so they don't want to open mid-flight. And, you know, same thing for here, lock it, make sure it's pushed all the way through, and it's gonna support the weight of the craft just like so. We have the brand new smoke black or transparent black cockpit pieces for this set. They do open on both sides, so you have access to a limited cockpit area. There is not much of a cockpit to speak of. There's uh, two levers for the throttle or just like control of the aircraft, a small console, and how you get the minifigures inside, you just remove a piece of the cockpit and you can place two pilots or two characters in there, which is of course that the Ornithopter was able to accommodate more of a crew. It's a bigger craft in the lore, but this is not the case of the set. You can only place two minifigures flying the thing at once. And keep that cockpit area in mind because this is the most classic system Lego bricks you're gonna ever build in this set. Everything else is 99% technique, so keep that in mind. If you remove some of the panels from the set, some of the single wedges covering the technique holes, you're gonna expose a ton, a ton of those mechanisms. So that's where the set kind of tries to disguise itself as I'm not technique, I'm actually icons, yeah, you're technique. <laughs> $165 for 369 pieces. You would say that's expensive, but you can tell there is a lot of uniqueness to this set, starting with the big cape for the Baron, ending with the massive, uh, never-before-seen blades, uh, going through uh, prints, no, no stickers in this set, there's only pretty, what, pretty much one print of the Atreides logo on this, both sides of the craft, a new type of the cockpits, and just tons and tons of technique. So, you would say it's expensive, probably you're gonna be right, but as I said before, in my case, maybe I would love to add 10 bucks to the price and add few more pieces to cover some of these holes on the side and maybe some of the mechanisms that are exposed because of that insane, insanely complex wing mechanism. Maybe that's not even possible at this point because the level of movement, the level of clearance these um, hydraulics need to have is quite insane, so you might not be even be able to make it look even better than it is. But if you overlook the looks, uh, the lack of looks there so, it's not, so it's not really a perfect display model, and you wanna have something of a you know conversation starter, people coming to your studio and like checking out your LEGO collection, you show how what this thing does among other Technic sets, people will be absolutely mesmerized but what we're having here. And I'm gonna tell you, I've been having fun just playing with this. Uh, it's not the perfect display piece, honestly. It's, it requires a staggering amount of space with the 80 centimeter wingspan. Uh, in close position, sure, it's easy to display because you can just, you know, have a just a slim shelf and it's gonna be fit just right. 
but in the end, this is it. This is the Dune Ornithopter. Who is it for? I would say for LEGO fans who are not newbies to the hobby. If you're a Dune fan and you see you, all the news are hitting the website and you see that LEGO, hey, LEGO is making a Dune Ornithopter and you happen to be a, a Dune crazy and you would love to have this, there is a big chance you're gonna buy this and you're gonna turn yourself away from LEGO because that's how complex it is. This is not a beginner set by any means. This is not even an intermediate set by any means. You need to push yourself through levels of technique me, an experienced builder, builder have never seen before. And I, I, I built things like the Osprey or the Lego Technic Ferrari SP3 Daytona. I built these things. This, things made, this, this one made me a little bit cry even so. <laughs> it made me cry more than the other sets. But in the end, once I attach those wings, this is the last piece you, of, of, of the whole thing you do, attach the wings as the cherry on top, once you do it, you're ending up with something of a wow factor. You just pick this up and like you do, you do this for the first time and you're like, wow, wow, nice job, Lego. So keep that in mind. But yeah, just, just keep that in mind that if you need that challenge, this is it. If you're a Dune fan going blind into Lego for the first time, don't let it turn it off because not all Lego sets are as complex as this. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this Ornithopter review. What an absolute beast of a set. The process requires some, some crazy perseverance in my opinion, but in the end you're ending up with something that is absolutely bonkers to play with and maybe not to look at, but to play with for sure. Thank you so much for watching. It was Mike and I'll see you in the next one here on Beyond the Brick.